Shabbat Shalom and welcome. I'm Ross, and I'm glad that you're here with us today. Thank you very much for joining our Sabbath morning scripture study. Today, the topic of my class is on chosenness. Chosenness, that is a word I checked. A biblical perspective on chosenness. Now, this is going to be popular uh, both for the lovers and the haters of Scripture. So I cannot wait to see the comments in the YouTube video section below after this class. But according to the text of the Hebrew Bible, according to the text of the Tanakh, the Torah, the Pentateuch, the prophets, the writings, whether we're talking about narrative material, whether we're talking about song, whether we're talking about poetry or prose, the biblical text time and again, bring forth the idea of Israel's chosenness throughout the text, throughout the Hebrew Bible. Now, of course, this begs the questions, who chose Israel? What were they chosen for? Or for what purpose is Israel the chosen nation? That is the title of today's class. Again, to some people, The idea that the creator of heaven and earth, the God of all creation, would choose a particular people is preposterous. To many, it's inconvenient. I talked this week with Jono Vandor in our Thursday night show about replacement theology. If Israel is Israel, if Israel in the Bible means Israel, and they're not Israel, these people really have a problem. It is inconvenient for Israel to be Israel. To others, it's just simply something that they don't agree with. But be that as it may, we're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about the chosenness of Israel. When we talk about Israel's God and uh, the biblical God, I'm not talking about the false gods. The Bible mentions many gods of other nations and so forth, but we're talking about Jehovah, yod heh vav heh Yehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as he became known post-Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 6. Remember in Exodus chapter 6, uh, verse 2, we read that God was not known by the name yod heh vav heh to the patriarchs, but by the name El Shaddai. But we're talking about that God who is presented early on as yod heh vav this God is not just an exclusively uh, mentioned or referenced as the God of Israel. Prior to, before there was an Israel, uh, before revealing this name yod heh vav this particular God chose Avram. Now, Avram is, according to the biblical accounts, not Jewish. Avram is not Israelite. If you read in Joshua 24, it's a good example of, uh, or a good sample text where it says that God called Avram. He was among a group of idolaters. So he's an idolater from Ur of the Chaldees, and God calls him out of that place to leave everything with which he's familiar, go to a land Uh, that was not known to him, sight unseen. We're going to begin today talking, beginning with the call of Avram. I want you to go to the book of uh, Nehemiah chapter 9, Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 6, and I want to begin there. And I just want to start with this as a way to kick off our class. My watch is helping me. 9-6. And it says... <laughs> okay. Uh, Nehemiah 9-6. It begins like this. Thou art Jehovah alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all the things that are in it the seas and all that is therein. Thou hast prepared them all, and the host of heaven worships thee. Thou art Jehovah, the God, who did choose Avram and did bring him out of Ur of the Chaldees 
and did give him the name Avraham and did find his heart faithful before thee and did make a covenant with him to give him the land of the Canaanites, the Hittite, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Girgashites, to give it to his seed, and you have performed your words, for you are righteous. So we begin straight out of the gate in today's class with establishing from a later writing, from the book of Nehemiah, that God chose Avram, later to be known as Avraham, and we're going to talk about this, but you'll notice that he not only chose Avram, but he also chose his seed after him. The status of chosen then goes or extends to the seed, the Zerah of Avraham. I want you to look now with me to Psalm 105, Psalm 105, and I just want to read verse 6, Psalm 105, verse 6, and it says, O seed of Avraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So this verse makes it very clear that we're talking about a literal, physical group, the descendants of Avraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're talking about Israel. Now, again, a lot of people will uh, seek to find a way to interpret these texts to where it does not indicate a physical descended group from Abraham. Sorry to disappoint you. If we're talking about the biblical text, it clearly, clearly is referring to this group. Now, this is not to say that other peoples outside of the group uh, who descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is not to say that other people can't claim or attach themselves to that God. Please don't misunderstand me. That's not what I'm talking about here. In fact, in the book of Malachi, Malachi, Malachi chapter 2 and verse 10, we read very clearly that we all have one God. In fact, the way that it's worded in the book of Malachi, it's questioned, it says like this, have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? And the answer to that question is yes. Universally, all mankind is and belongs to the one God. There is but one God biblically, particularly in the later text of the Bible. We'll get into that uh, a little bit more as we go through the class. But according to the biblical accounts, all humanity descends from Adam, uh, and then later all descend from Noah, according to the biblical narrative. Now, there are other texts which indicate a universality of the biblical God. So, for instance, in Joel chapter 2, I'm just going to go through a few of these verses uh, without reading them, but in Joel chapter 2, verse 32 in the English. In uh, Hebrew Bible, it's going to be Joel chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, all who call upon the name Jehovah will escape or will be saved, I think is the way the English puts it. Now, this particular passage is interesting. All who call upon the name yod heh vav -Heh, will be saved or will escape. So this idea that any who turn to the one God can attach themselves to that God, again, shows up time and again in the Hebrew Bible. Now, Jehovah, the God of the Bible, is referred to in the book of Numbers in two texts. Again, we're not going to these to read them, but Numbers chapter 16, verse 22, and chapter 27 and verse 16 God is referred to as Elohe Haruchot Lechol Basar, the God of the spirits of all flesh. So this idea that God is the God of all, the God of all humanity is clearly a biblical idea. In fact, let's not leave out of our list of universal texts 
the passage in Isaiah chapter 56. In Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 7, we read of a temple, a house not yet realized, a house that has yet to be built. And we're not talking about rebuilding something that existed before. This is something that has not appeared yet. But uh, Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7 refers to this house of prayer for all peoples. And there are many other such passages. But at the same time, at the same time, the same Hebrew Bible from which we get these passages which deal with God's universality, we also get things like Amos chapter 3 and verse 2. In Amos chapter 3 and verse 2, it says very clearly that you, speaking of Israel, of all the, the families of the earth, it's you that I know. In fact, it's uh, verse 1 of Amos chapter 3 refers to the people of Israel, the whole people, God says, that I brought up from the land of Israel, uh, Israel, uh, Egypt. Excuse me. So the idea is that God is saying very clearly through the prophet Amos that Israel, of all the families on the earth, it's a family that God chooses ultimately to be a model to the other nations of the world. Now, there's an accountability, a responsibility that goes with that. There is, uh, in fact, in Amos chapter 3, it goes on to talk about uh, the accountability for the iniquities uh, that go with that chosenness. Now, we're going to go to the Pentateuch. We're going to go to the book of Exodus and I want you to go with me to Exodus chapter 19, beginning in verse 4. Exodus chapter 19, beginning in verse 4. Because now we're going to begin to focus on those texts in the Tanakh, which deal very specifically with Israel's chosenness. Uh, 19 of Exodus, verse 4. Uh, in fact, I'm going to begin in verse 3 in the Hebrew. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You've seen what I did to Egypt, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant then you shall be my own treasure from among all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. A kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now where it says, if you will uh, obey, in Hebrew, it's a repetition of the word shema. If you listening, if listening, you will listen then you will be my segula, in Hebrew, my segula, translated variously. Your translation may say, uh, it may say treasure, it may say possession, but the idea is one of belonging, a precious connection, a belonging. So what, he, what Moses is told by God to tell the children of Israel is that this group of people will in fact be a segula, a special treasure. Years ago, uh, Dr. Tabor taught a class on the segula. It's always stuck with me as one of the uh, my favorite classes that I ever heard from Tabor or anyone else. But there are several passages in the Hebrew Bible which deal with the segula, and I'm just going to go through those verses. Uh, I just read Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. I just want you to have these in your notes. Here are the other verses, and we will go through parts of these as we go through the class. But to get these together, Israel as the Segula, Exodus 19.5, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 8, Deuteronomy 14 and verse 2, chapter 28, verse 18 of Deuteronomy, Malachi chapter 3, verse 17, and Psalm uh, 135 and verse 4. We're going to look at these as we work through the class, uh, but here are the verses so you can have them in your notes. 
all the earth is mine is something that the biblical text says over and over. Okay, all the earth is mine. And it says, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation or a holy people. It's Goy Gadol. Uh, I'm sorry, Goy Kadosh. Goy Kadosh. And by the way, in Exodus 19, Goy Kadosh is the only occurrence of this phrase, Goy Kadosh's Exodus, Exodus 19. Other places, we're going to see Am Kadosh, uh, or Kodesh, a, uh, a holy nation, a holy people. Okay, so now we're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy. I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 to begin with. We're going to go through a series of texts that only occur, this phrase only occurs in Deuteronomy. There are reasons for that. Uh, we can talk about that in the Discord after. But Deuteronomy, I'm going to begin, as you can see on the screen, in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 37, Deuteronomy 4 and verse 37, says, and by the way, you can read in context later. I just want to pick up key phrases. That's why I'm isolating verses. Verse 37, and because he loved your fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them and brought thee out. He himself being present with his mighty power out of Egypt to drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art to bring you in, to give you their land for an inheritance as it is this day. And then it goes, goes in to uh, assign a responsibility to those who are going in, and that would be to know that God is one and so forth. So this idea, what I want you to look at in this particular verse the reason that God chooses Israel, the people of Israel, as a, an um, uh, a holy people is because he loved their fathers. Because he loved their fathers, it says very clearly, he chose their seed after them. So this is one thing that shows up, particularly in Deuteronomic language. In Deuteronomy, we see this over and over. In fact, it's only in Deuteronomy that we really encounter this love relationship between God and the people of Israel. Now, next verse on our list is Deuteronomy chapter 7. Look at Deuteronomy 7. It's on the screen before you, beginning in verse 6. For you, for you are a holy people. For you are a holy people. Uh, in this it says, uh, actually, uh, you are a... Am Segula, to the Lord your God, the Lord has chosen you to be a special people to himself above all the people that are on the face of the earth. Am Kadosh, the Lord did not set his love on you or choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But because Jehovah loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn to your fathers, has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, or Egypt. Know therefore, know therefore that Jehovah your God, uh, he is God, the faithful God, keeps covenant and truth, etc. So again, the idea that he chose Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob as a holy people, and, and this particular phrase again occurs over and over and over, he's chosen this particular people because he loves their fathers and because he's going to confirm that oath. And therefore, it, this phrase, uh, holy people, again, occurs five times in the Tanakh, all in Deuteronomy. This group is to be an am segula, a people chosen, a special treasure chosen from among all the people of the earth. Imagine it's like this. God's looking out, and he has all of these different people groups, and he selects 
carefully selects a specific person, a specific group. Starts with a person, starts with Avram, chooses Avram and loves Avram, chooses his seed after him. This is the point that we're making here. He loves you, keeps the oath that he swore to your fathers. Next passage in Deuteronomy is chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 15. Now again, it's hard to just read the singular verses, but in verse 15... Only, only, it says in Hebrew, rach, only, Jehovah took delight in your fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. And then it goes in to what is expected of this people. By the way, I would say, uh, to really capture the context here, you would need to begin in verse 12 and read from chapter 12 all that follows to get the whole story. But in this particular passage, again, it's because he took delight in your fathers to love them and he chose their seed after them. Love of fathers, choosing descendant, you see. It's this connectedness. Now, the phrase that keeps occurring is... From all the people. Again, it's not that God is not the God of the spirits of all the flesh on all the earth. That's That's a fact. God is, have we not been created by one God? The answer is yes. But he selects a specific family to model his way. And that family is begins with Avram. And because Avram is faithful, it's in Genesis chapter 26 is a classic example, verses 1 through 5, where he says, because Avram, Avraham, kept my way and my statutes and my judgments and my Torah, because of that, I'm choosing the descendants as well. But from all the people, this phrase, precise phrase, in this context occurs in a lot of the texts that we're dealing with today. Exodus 19.5, Exodus 33, verse 16, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6, which we just read. It appears once there in chapter 7, verse 7 of Deuteronomy. It appears twice, the idea of choosing from all the people, but it also occurs in our next verse in Deuteronomy. Look with me at Deuteronomy chapter 14 and uh, verse 2. It's the last one. That was, uh, that was displayed. In chapter 14, verse 2, it says, let me start with verse 1. You are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not gash yourself nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead because you are a holy people. Because you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord has chosen you to be a special possession uh, to himself out of all the nations that are upon the earth. You're to be an Am Segula, an Am Segula, I'm sorry, an Am Kadosh, and an Am Segula, a people, a special, special possession, special treasure of a people, a, an Am Kadosh, a holy people. Now, notice also that in verse 1, it refers to the children of Israel, the Segula, it, uh, it refers to not only the children of Israel as uh, a holy people, but it says you are the sons of God, the sons of God. So we're talking about the sons of God. Israel is referred to in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 22 as the sons of God. Hosea chapter 11 and verse 1. Remember, it says, out of Egypt I called my son. Clearly, in context, talking about Israel. And then in Jeremiah chapter 31, it refers to Israel or Ephraim as God's son as well. Now, the more we work through, the more we work through these uh, texts, the more we see consistency. Am Kadosh, the people, uh, these are the verses just to make sure you have them in your notes. The holy people referring to a physical group. It's not superseded. It's not taken away. It's not annulled. It's not abrogated. It's not exchanged. There's not a replacement. There's not 
something that they did wrong that they lose that status. And, and I welcome people who think that that is the case to say, send me those references because we're going to show that very clearly. But Am Kadosh, Deuteronomy 7, 6, Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 2, Deuteronomy 14 and verse 21, Deuteronomy, and notice all these are Deuteronomy, chapter 26 and verse 19, and chapter 28 and verse 9. Now, there are 19 times total, 19 times total, that the Hebrew word translated chosen is used in the Hebrew Bible uh, tied to the people of Israel, 19 times. Of these, perhaps of the greatest special note are those that are found in Deutero or 2nd Isaiah. Deutero or 2nd Isaiah. I want you to look with me this morning. We're going to go through these texts. I want you to go uh, with Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 8 and 9. Isaiah 41 <clears throat> verse 8 and 9. And it says, But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called you from the farthest corners and said to thee, you are my servant. I've chosen you and not cast you away. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Indeed, I will help you. Moreover, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. They that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Those that contend with thee, they that war against thee, shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to thee, Fear not, I will help thee. The idea in Isaiah chapter 49, uh, 41 here is that Israel, the servant of God, very clearly uh, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Very specific. So it's not talking about some group that later calls themselves Israel here that is not really Israel, that's not really a descendant of Abraham or Isaac or Jacob. It's talking about a specific group, a very specific group, and it makes that quite clear. Now look with me at Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. In Isaiah chapter 42, beginning in verse 1, I want to pick this up. These are part of the servant songs. Behold, Isaiah 42 says, verse 1, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the nations. He shall not cry nor lift up his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the dimly burning flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment into truth, not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his Torah. The isles shall wait for his Torah. Now, some people put this description as a person, all right? But let's keep reading. There's a white space here, and then it resumes in verse 5. Thus says the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which comes out of it, he that gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, Jehovah, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep you and give you for a covenant of the people, for a light of the nations, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things are come to pass, new things do I declare, 
before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Now, again, there is a debate as to whether this is an individual or a group, or could it be a group within the larger group? Because one thing that is clearly communicated as we work through these texts, one thing that stands out is that Israel, the people, the physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is in fact called the Son of God and called God's servant. So here, we have to look at the language and say, is it talking about an individual or is it talking about a group, a group within the group, if we will? Now, I want to look at Isaiah 43. Again, we're, we're going to continue to work through uh, in, in Isaiah 43, just to give you the context. Let me just read verse 1. I'm working towards verse 10, which is where I want to focus. But in verse 1, notice it says, Isaiah 43, 1, but now, thus says the Lord that created you, O Jacob, who are we talking about? Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. You are mine. Then it goes on to talk about how sure that love and connection is. As you work through, he's talking about uh ransoming other nations on behalf of this chosen nation. Talks about bringing them back from all the people. Oh, let me just read it. Can't just tell you about it. Verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For I am Jehovah your God, the Holy One of Israel, your deliverer. I gave Egypt for your ransom. Who's he talking about here? Is he talking about some other people? No. He's talking about the Israel that he saved from Egypt. Cush and Seva instead of you. Since you were precious in my sight, you were honored, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not. For I am with you. I will bring your seed from the east, gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Remember where I tell you uh, the passages call Israel God's children. Everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I've made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and announce to us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them listen and say it's truth. You are my witnesses, says Jehovah, and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor neither shall there be any after me. This particular passage of all of the text, he talks about he's chosen them, he's going to bring them from among the nations where they've been scattered, and it's all because he loves them and has made a covenant, and their part will be to testify, to be a witness to the one God. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. See, we're just working through 2nd Isaiah, Deuteronomy, or Deutero-Isaiah. This is an interesting passage in Isaiah 44, beginning in verse 1. Now, hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Okay, look, let's make sure no one's confused here. Jacob, Jacob, my servant, Israel, the chosen. He's not talking to the patriarchs. He's talking to the descendants. Thus says the Lord that made you and formed you from the womb. Sounds very familiar, very similar to what we read in Isaiah 42, right? Uh, formed you from the womb, who will help you? Fear not, O Jacob, my servant. And Jeshurun, or in Hebrew, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen, 
For I will pour water upon thirsty land and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your seed, literally seed, and my blessing upon your offspring. Same group. And they will spring up as among the grass as willows by the water courses. Now look. I'm not going to get too much into detail, but these are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who have been scattered among the nations, and they've lost their identity. They don't know who they are, but when the Spirit pours upon them, here's what happens. One shall say, I am Jehovah's, and another shall call himself by the name Yaakov, and another shall subscribe with his hand to the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing this now. This is actually happening now, be that as it may. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah 44 is one of my favorites, by the way. We're going to begin Isaiah 49 beginning in verse 1. Again, another what we call a, um, a servant song, one of the servant songs, as they're called. Listen, O Isles, to me. Listen, O Isles. Shemu iim elai. And hearken, O people from far. The Lord has called me from birth, from the bowels of my mother, has he made mention of my name. And he's made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand as he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver, his, uh, in, in his quiver has he hid me and said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, this is a servant speaking, I have labored in vain. I've spent my strength for naught and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my reward with my God. With my God. Now, uh, there's a white space. Now, let let me read this next passage. And now, remember a minute ago I mentioned that there could be a servant. Israel is the servant. But within the servant is a servant Uh, part of the servant nation, a servant to the servant, a servant for the servant. Here it says in verse 5, And now says Jehovah that formed me from the womb to be a servant to bring Jacob back to him, that Israel should be gathered to him, and I was honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God was my strength. And he said, Is it too slight a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel, I also give you for a light to the nations that my salvation may be to the end of the earth. Now, I'm going to talk more about this. We're going to get into the details of this uh, after the class for part of our discussion. But here we go, verse 7. I want to keep going in this particular passage in Isaiah 49. Thus says Jehovah, the Redeemer of Israel, his Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhors, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful and the Holy One of Israel who has chosen thee. Thus says the Lord, in an acceptable time have I answered you, and in a day of salvation have I helped you, and I will preserve you and give you for a covenant of the people. You see these phrases keep coming up again. It's the same phrases over and over. To restore the land, to assign desolate inheritances to their owners, that you may say to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be on all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that has mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. 
and I will make my mountain away, and my highways shall be raised up. This is language like we meet in, in Isaiah 40, from Isaiah 40 on. Behold, there shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, these from the land of Sinim. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For Jehovah has comforted his people and had mercy upon his afflicted. You see, this group that is chosen over and over, we read the phrase, about being chosen. In chapter 49, it appears in verse 7. You may have missed as I was reading. The Holy One of Israel who has chosen thee. He's talking to the group that's chosen in this particular passage. Over and over, time and again, what we see in the text of the Hebrew Bible is language that's very clear, concise, no ambiguity. God says, I chose Abraham, Avram, and his seed after him, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, there are plenty of other texts, plenty of other texts which say the same thing. We've just touched a few of these, uh, and, and I've got a couple in my notes that I'm not going to go to, but just to touch these texts and go through the, so you have them in your notes. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 24, mentions the two clans that God chose, talking about Ephraim and Judah. In Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 5, there is, uh, God is speaking according to the text, and he says, the day that I chose Israel, the day that I chose there are several psalms which speak of the chosenness, and I do want to read one of those. Let's go to Psalm 135, Psalm 135, and I want to read verse 4. Psalm 135 and verse 4, it says, For Jehovah has chosen Yaakov to himself, or for himself. Israel for his special treasure. Israel for his special treasure. In Hebrew, there's our word segula. It's one of the passages. So, so very clearly, Psalm 135, the Lord, Jehovah, has chosen Jacob. Remember, Amos chapter 3 says that of all, from all the people, it's this one family from all the families of the earth, <coughs> excuse me, God chooses one family, one family to be a light to the nations, to be a covenant of the people. And as we work through these texts, it becomes very clear that it's talking about a specific group. Now, some might argue and say, well, that group didn't obey and they were not righteous, and they were cast out of that land. And, and now, this is what the replacement theologians say, and some people don't even know they're being replacement theologians. I've been corrected, air quotes, by so many people over the last few weeks that tell me, if you would just read Galatians, you would get this. If you would just read Romans, I promise you, I have. Don't be confused. Don't be confused because the facts are clear. The Hebrew Bible is not at all confusing on this point. Israel is Israel. The people of Israel are the people of Israel. It's not another group. Now, another people, other people can join. They can join and they can call out to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it's, it's very specific. It's very clear. And replacement theology, as we talked about this week, uh, takes away the importance of the people and the place. So it's basically not tied to anything except someone's wishes or imaginations. But I want to look at Isaiah chapter 14, uh, another text as we're, we're winding things down here. Isaiah 14, beginning in verse 1. This is especially for those who have dismissed Israel, who've said, 
Now, it's not talking about the literal physical group. Those people are gone, Ross. They were scattered. Okay, well, help me with this then. Isaiah 14. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will choose Israel and set them in their own land, meaning they had been uprooted. They were not in their land. But God is going to take that group, physical group, and put them in their land, you see, not someone else's land. They're not going to, you know, another country. Ultimately, they're going to their land. Verse, uh, keep going. The stranger shall be joined with them. See, there, there, there's a room for others. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. A lot of times people want to want to read what they want to into the text. But time and again, the Hebrew Bible makes makes it very, very clear that the biblical text is talking about a specific people tied to a specific land. And as we work through the text, it begins all the way back with Avram. In, in Genesis 18, by this time he's Abraham, in Genesis 18, verse 18 and 19, God reasons to himself why he should include Abraham in what he's about to do. And he said, because I know him that he's going to teach his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord, which is defined in that very text, to do justice and righteousness in the earth. And that's the plan. He's going to take this group, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, give them a land, and they are to then model that way. If they don't model the way, they'll be cast out. Put a check mark there. That happened. But he promises he's going to bring them back. Hey, listen up. Put a check mark there too because it started to happen years and years ago. Now, just so you know, there are plenty of families of Jewish people who never have left. Their time in the land goes all the way back. But through wars and expulsions and diaspora, many Jews had to go. They were forced out. But from around the world, the Jewish people first, and those from Isaiah 44, where it talks about, they begin to wake up as the Spirit comes on them. Somehow, some way, that group's coming back too. It's going to be so full, the prophets say, that these people will say, there's not enough room for us here. We need to spill over. Oh, there's a lot that's left to come. But it's very clear, this is talking about a specific people coming back to a specific place. In Genesis, God chose Avram, and he says, I love Av Avram. Because he loved Avram, he chose Avram's seed after. He chose Avram, but he also chose, it extended to his seed after him. Now, we're talking about Israel, a physical, literal descendants who are chose, chose, who are chose, who are chosen, who are loved, a special treasure, a segula, you already have those verses. There are also verses which call this people Am Kadosh. For your notes, just write these down. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 26. Again, Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Deuteronomy 14, 21. Deuteronomy 26 verse 19. Deuteronomy 28 verse 9. Isaiah 62 and verse 12. So you need to have all of these. You can't, it's, it becomes impossible when you consider all of these texts to replace the people, the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
Now, look, I know that there are atheists and people who don't believe anything. You know, they don't accept anything in the biblical text. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you because you don't believe any of this. So go do whatever it is you do with other atheists. I'm talking to people who are looking for answers from the text of the Bible. Israel is referred to as God's inheritance, as God's possession. These people, the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are called the inheritance of God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight texts that I have in my notes. The God of all the earth, the God of the spirits of all flesh, chose one people, one family of all the peoples on the face of the ground. And he held them accountable and holds them to a high standard because they are to model the way of God, to do justice and righteousness in the earth. The nation's rage is a hatred and has been a hatred. People don't like the fact this chosenness is a problem. You know, Israelis, the people of Israel, uh, they, they don't particularly like this either. They feel uncomfortable with this. But the seed of Abram was chosen by God. He loves this particular group, and he's promised to do mighty things on their behalf. And so I pray that the people of Israel will stand strong in the face of all the haters. And let me tell you this very clearly. I stand with the people of Israel. I choose to stand with the chosen. Shabbat shalom, shavua tov. Hey, listen, if you're with me right now, you need to take you a little bit of a break, get some popcorn, get something fun, uh, get ready because we're going to be in the discord and uh, I want you to join me in there. We'll have a discussion. Here's the rule, just in case. If, if you're just coming in and you want to join, we don't know who you are. You may not be able to have a whole lot going on. You might not even get in this week. But that's not my fault. If you want to join me, be ready. Join the Discord server, and you can be with us next week. Till then, I'll see you in a few minutes. Shabbat shalom.